Jessica is seen loading all of her belongings into a U-Haul trailer. She has a hard time starting her car, but soon manages to make it and drives away from the town while listening to an audiobook. She notices a Jeep in front of her, driving at a slower speed. She receives a signal from the vehicle and makes an attempt to overtake it. However, as soon as she does so, the Jeep speeds up and doesn't allow her to join the lane. A truck is moving towards her in the lane, so she speeds up and moves back into the right lane. The man in the Jeep gives her one final signal, only to drift off in a different direction. She stops the car to calm herself down. Later on, Jessica's waiting at the gas station when she decides to call her father. She tells him that she wanted to speak with him and not her mother. Despite the poor signals, she's able to let him know that she's already left the town, to which her father's confused as he and her mother were supposed to help her pack and that he's worried for her. She reassures him that she's going to be all right and then turns around to discover the same black Jeep from earlier. She ends the call and leaves to proceed with the trip. In a later scene, she's seen in a motel, gently stroking the wedding ring that is hanging from her chain. The phone rings, but seeing that it's her mother calling, she doesn't pick up. She lies in bed looking at pictures of her deceased husband and becomes emotional. Jessica lies awake in bed while looking through the window and sees the black Jeep pull over in the motel parking lot. The next morning, Jessica is woken up by her alarm. She gets in her car and sets up her GPS. But before she can start driving, a man knocks on her window, startling her. She opens the window a little and he asks if she recognizes him, then points to the black Jeep. The man expresses his regret for the incident that occurred on the road the day before, admitting that he was careless and should have paid more attention. He reveals to her that he's familiar with the neighborhood. After hearing that she's heading north, he bids her farewell, wishes her a pleasant journey, and then walks away. While continuing her journey, Jessica notices the same Jeep parked in the middle of the road. She comes to a stop behind it, but stays in the car and locks the doors. Jessica tries to get around the Jeep, but the man forces her to pull over and requests to roll down her window. He informs her that his engine has stopped working and she offers to contact the tow truck for him. He says that he would prefer if she drove him to the closest petrol station and assist him in moving his vehicle out of the way. Jessica says that she's running late and she could call the gas station that is closest to them to let them know where he's located. The man insists on letting him in, but she apologizes and leaves. Later in the evening, she decides to pull over at a stop and take a break. She then gives her mother a call. They bring up the subject of her leaving early, and while her mother believes it would be unwise in light of what took place, Jessica believes that it's time for her to move on. Suddenly, the Jeep pulls up behind her once more, and she hurries back to her car. When she gets in, she has trouble starting the car, and before she can drive off, the man from the Jeep walks over, knocking on her window, saying that she almost ran him over, but she doesn't stop. Later on, while driving, she sees him behind her again. Fed up, she calls the police and tries to explain what's going on, but can barely keep it together. After the Jeep picks up speed and passes her, she's relieved as she reports to the dispatcher that it was a false alarm. Soon after, Jessica experiences difficulty controlling her vehicle. It begins to veer on the road until she brings it to a rest in a relatively safe location, a little bit off the road. Upon inspecting the vehicle, she discovers that her tire has been slashed. The Jeep reappears again and speeds up towards her. She couldn't lock the car or start the engine. He breaks her window. She fights back for a while before getting sedated. Jessica wakes up in a room, still drowsy from the anesthetic she was given, barely able to stand up. She can't make out anything when she peeps through the door. She hears him outside and begs him to let her out, but he just shushes her, smiling. Night comes and Jessica can hear him walking and whistling outside the room. As he enters, he sees her tucked away in a corner. She asks him what he wants and offers to pay him in exchange for her freedom. She tries to negotiate, promising that she won't tell anyone. Unfazed, he tells her that she's not the first one to say that. He instructs her to undress. Jessica begs him to let her use the bathroom, and when she goes towards the door, he shoves her down and drags her back to the corner, sitting next to her. He informs her that he was the one who cut her tire, and then shows her a video of her husband doing a card trick. Jessica cries while the man holds her. He sees that her wedding band is on a chain and asks if her husband left her. She tells him that he died, and upon insisting, tells him that her husband made a very inconsiderate decision. 
The man keeps repeating that it's okay and leaves, locking the door. The next day, Jessica hears a machine running outside and runs to the door. She sees that the key is still in the hole and tries to get it, but fails. She sees a nail on the beam next to her and uses it to get the key. She unlocks the door and goes into the house. The noise stops, so she hides before he comes inside. He sits down to eat. On the call, he tells his wife that he's at a nice hotel who thinks he's on a business trip. He tells her that he'll be back in a few days. Jessica listens to him talk to his wife and daughter like a normal person. When the call ends, he goes down to see her and she takes a chance to run towards the jungle. Realizing that she's missing, he chases after her. Jessica hurts her foot and removes the branch from it, screaming in pain. The man hears this and follows. She runs, suppressing the pain. Upon finding herself stuck between him and the river, she jumps into the stream. The strong currents of the river carry her further downstream. When the river calms down, she gets out. She's lost and in pain, but she keeps going when suddenly she hears footsteps and hides. As the footsteps get closer, she hits the man with her walking stick, but realize that he's a hunter. The hunter, Robert, tells her to get down on her knees, and she begs him to help her because someone is trying to kill her. He gets his phone to call the police, but she had broken it while hitting him. Jessica begs him to get her out of there, and Robert keeps questioning her. He gives her the shoes that belong to his wife, and they get in his car and drive away, but soon discover a fallen tree on their way. Jessica freaks out, saying that the man did it, and both get out to try to move the tree. He says he's not sure if there's another way out of the woods. The Jeep comes up again. Jessica grabs Robert's shotgun and tells him that the man on the Jeep is her kidnapper. Robert takes the gun away from her and says that he'll take care of it. The man gets out of the car while talking on the phone. He tells Robert that Jessica is his sister. She ran away from home when she was having an episode. Robert tells him what Jessica had told him, but the man still sticks to his story, saying that she lost her mind after her husband died. Robert isn't sure what to think, so he keeps looking out for Jessica. She tells him that now that he's seen his face, the man won't let him out of the woods alive. The man keeps acting like she's his sister, grabbing her. Jessica screams for help and tells him to ask for his phone so she can call the police. Robert obliges, and Jessica takes the chance to run away. Robert stops the man from chasing her and tells him to call the police. The man gives Robert his phone and then quickly tackles him by punching him. He grabs the gun and shoots Robert. Jessica runs deeper into the woods while the man chases her. It's raining hard in the dark woods and Jessica hides in a cave. The man shines a light towards the cave and taunts her by whistling the same song he did before. Soon, she thinks he's gone and goes outside, but he shoots her in the shoulder, but she doesn't stop. Jessica crawls on the ground in the woods so he can't see her. He says that he knows that he shot her and in two hours, she'll bleed to death. He mocks her to come out and fight him while she still can, dropping his gun to the ground and giving her one minute to grab it. He keeps taunting her by talking about her husband. Jessica keeps her calm and stays put. After realizing that his trick isn't working, he takes the gun and walks away, exclaiming that he'll find her. Jessica starts to walk through the difficult jungle, staying away from the trail when she hears the noise of an engine. She sees the man getting out of his vehicle with Robert's gun and dragging his body to get rid of it. She makes a run for the Jeep, but can't find the keys. Seeing the man coming to the Jeep, she takes his phone and hides in the trunk. He thinks he hears something, but continues driving. Jessica calls the police. Not being able to speak loudly, she begs him to trace the call. When the man realizes his phone is missing, he stops the car to look for it. Jessica charges at him with a wrench. They fight as he attempts to drive the car. She takes his knife away and strangles him with the wrench. She stabs him with his knife, making the car spin several times and stop. She comes out and lays on the ground. A helicopter flies above her, so she follows it into a clearing. The man also gets out and follows her. She calls his wife and tells her that he's a kidnapper and a killer. The man witnesses as she tells her full name to his wife and says, if she disappears, it will be because her husband had killed her, just like he killed Robert. The man attacks her and she strikes back. They fight in the mud when he stabs her and is about to kill her, but she bites his shoulder, grabs a knife, stabs him, and then watches him die. The helicopter is heard getting closer and Jessica is saved. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlists on the screen. 
Thanks for watching.